Paul George has been the topic of several NBA headlines for the past 24 hours. George apparently went to the Pacers management and said that he will not re-sign with the team once his contract is up in the 2018 NBA season. He also mentioned that he prefers to join the LA Lakers in free agency. There has been a ton of talk about George leaving the Pacers, but I really didn't expect this to happen so quickly. I mean for the most part we all knew Paul George was going to leave Indiana eventually, but we didn't think it was going to happen this soon. And yesterday the vertical posted that the Cavs and the Pacers were discussing a potential Paul George trade. So in this video I'll be talking about whether or not Paul George will or could end up with the Cleveland Cavaliers. But before I get into this video, if you guys enjoy NBA and basketball content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the Cavs and Pacers have engaged in trade talks, and every NBA fan around the world is pretty intrigued. The Cavs obviously won the 2016 NBA title, and then just recently lost to the Golden State Warriors in 5 games. And it was clear that the Cavs are nowhere as good as the Golden State Warriors. And obviously knowing LeBron James, he wants to compete and he wants to be the greatest of all time. And I think with the current roster they have right now, they won't be able to beat the Warriors anytime soon. And a few weeks ago, Chris Broussard actually brought it up on The Herd on FS1 that the Cavs need to hurry up and give the Indiana Pacers a call to see if Paul George is available. Fast forward a couple weeks and the Pacers want to get rid of Paul George before the NBA draft on, on June 20th, this Thursday. So there's a huge chance that Paul George will be dealt by the draft. And the question is whether it'll be to the Cavs or some other team. Now the logistics of this trade is actually pretty complicated because the Cavs don't have a lot of tradable assets. Because if you take a look at the team, LeBron James is untouchable obviously. Then you have 5 guys who are on huge contracts and then the rest of the team are all guys with very low trade value. So the only assets the Cavs actually have are Kevin Love who's on a $21 million deal uh, for last season, Kyrie Irving who made $17 million last year, Tristan Thompson who made $15 million last year, then J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert both making $12 and $10 million respectively. Obviously the Cavs are not going to get rid of either Kyrie or Tristan Thompson, I don't see it happening. Kyrie Irving has been huge for this team and if it wasn't for him they would not have a 2016 NBA championship. And same goes for Tristan Thompson one of the best rebounders in the league and to replace a guy like Tristan Thompson might be a little hard especially in today's NBA where you don't really see too many good big men. So when it comes down to it Kevin Love is really this team's only tradable asset who actually has value because looking at the other players on this roster I mean who's going to be really trading for Kay Felder or Kyle Korver or Richard Jefferson who still has three more years left on his deal. So in order for this trade to go through, the Cavs would have to get rid of Kevin Love. But at the end of the day, I think that actually benefits the Cavs. Kevin Love has dealt with injuries for the past couple of years, and earlier this season even, he missed over a month with a knee injury. He actually needed knee surgery. Not to mention in the NBA Finals, how many times did we see him hobbled with injuries where he'd fall on the floor and grab his knee or... You know, he'll bump knees with somebody and be late for the next possession. Kevin Love just suffered so many injuries this season. So in order for Paul George to head to Cleveland, the Cavs would have to give up Kevin Love unless the Pacers are insanely desperate to trade Paul George. The Cavs traded away all of their near future draft picks for guys like Channing Frye and Kyle Korver. And they do have one interesting prospect coming from Europe. His name is Seti Osman. He was drafted a couple years ago and he, he played decent in Europe and he'll be making the jump to the NBA this season. But even then, is that enough to to trade for Paul George? And the answer is no. There's really no foreseeable possibility that Kevin Love and Paul George will end up on the same team. And the Pacers don't have to trade PG to Cleveland because at the end of the day, this is their decision. This is not Paul George's decision. So say Boston comes and offers them maybe a first round pick for next year. That may be better than any deal Cleveland offers that doesn't involve Kevin Love. Not to mention, Paul George would only be a one year rental because he's made it clear that he wants to sign in LA. So if the Cavs were to trade Kevin Love, a guy who made the all-star team this year and has found a role with his Cavaliers team, you may only get Paul George for one year. And Paul George could resign if he enjoys being around a championship atmosphere, but he could easily walk away from the Cavaliers. And this would put him in an awful predicament because LeBron might end up leaving Cleveland if something like this were to happen. But like I mentioned, unless this is like a three-team deal or something, the Cavs will have to give up Kevin Love. So we talked about this whole situation from Cleveland's perspective, but let's take a look at Paul George's perspective. First of all, Paul George has always made it clear that he wants to win, but he is not going to win in Indiana, 
and he is not going to win anytime soon in LA. I mean, they do have the second pick in this draft where I believe they're going to draft Lonzo Ball. Then they have some nice young pieces like D'Angelo Russell, Brandon Ingram, and Julius Randle, just to name a few. But even then, that LA team is years away from being a championship contending team. So if Paul George really wants to win, it doesn't make any sense for him to go to LA or to stay in Indiana. And that's where I think Cleveland is his best bet to win. Paul George could win his ring in Cleveland and then spend the rest of his career playing in LA making his money without having the worry to win a ring. That would be the best case scenario for Paul George's career. He's had a great career, potentially even a Hall of Fame career, we'll have to see how these next few years play out for him. But regardless, if he were to win a ring in Cleveland, it would not only improve his case for the Hall of Fame, but it would give him the opportunity to just make money in his hometown for the rest of his career. That's something hard to turn down. At the end of the day, this decision comes down to the Indiana Pacers and not Paul George. So I saw some reports yesterday, I'm not sure how true they are, but I read that Indiana actually called Cleveland to talk about the trade. Cleveland didn't actually call Indiana. And this is interesting because you would think the Cavs would be the first team to call Indiana trying to get Paul George, but no, it was reversed. Also, the Cavs are the only team so far to engage in serious discussions involving the PG trade. LA will not at all enter the discussion this year. They do not want to give up any assets, given the fact that PG might sign with him in the upcoming offseason. And Boston, on the other hand, is in the same situation. They don't want to give up any assets for a one-year rental who might leave the team after one season. Although Boston needs to win right now, so does Cleveland. Now, although LeBron is only getting older, he's actually been playing the best basketball of his career, and he's shown no signs of slowing down. So I don't see Boston beating Cleveland at least this next season, but down the road, if Boston plays their cards right, they can build a team that can take down LeBron and ruin his final streak, but I don't see that team including Paul George. So the question is, will Paul George end up in Cleveland? Well, it comes down to really two things. First of all, are the Cavs willing to give up Kevin Love? If they are, Indiana will be receiving an all-star player who had some pretty incredible seasons about three or four years ago with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He hasn't shown that he can lead a team by himself, but he's shown that he can be an all-star caliber player wherever he plays. But this is also a guy who's finally found his role in Cleveland and who looked really good for them even in the NBA Finals. And secondly, how desperate are the Indiana Pacers to trade Paul George? They've made it clear that they want to trade Paul George before the draft. And if, if it comes to Wednesday or maybe like Thursday morning and no deals are done, there's a possibility that the Cavs could steal Paul George from the Indiana Pacers. Cause say nobody else offers something for Paul George and they have their mindset on trading him before the draft, maybe David Griffin and the Cavaliers could do a deal that doesn't involve Kevin Love. I highly doubt that will actually happen, but it's interesting to think about. Another question that arises is, will the Cavs be able to beat the Warriors super team with Paul George? And the answer is maybe. I mean, when you have a team that won 73 games and then you add a former MVP and former scoring champion in Kevin Durant, it's hard to take down a team like that. And these guys are also so young. I mean, they're all 27, 28, or 29. And the thing I've noticed about watching the Cavs is that they know how to stop Stephen Curry and they know how to limit Klay Thompson. If you guys remember from game seven last year, they forced Draymond Green to beat them, not Curry and not Clay. That's why Draymond Green went off to have like 26 or 27 points um, in game seven of the 2016 NBA Finals because they limited Curry and they limited Clay. And we saw similar things in game four, but Kevin Durant is probably the best scorer we have in this game and you can't stop him. The good thing though is that Paul George is an elite defender. So he'll definitely be able to slow Kevin Durant down, and he's a much better defender than Richard Jefferson, who guarded KD for a big chunk of the series, because Kevin Love can't guard Kevin Durant. Let's be honest here. So Paul George will also improve this team defensively. Not to mention, bringing in Paul George will give you a guy who can play so well on both ends of the floor. Because Paul George is a shot creator, Paul George is a playmaker, and he's an elite defender. Kevin Love isn't much of a shot creator. He's, he's improved since he got it in Cleveland, but he's nowhere as good of a shot creator as Paul George. Not to mention, Kevin Love is not a playmaker, but Paul George is. Kevin Love is not a great defender, and Paul George is. So the deal makes a lot of sense. 
Because think about it. Say LeBron goes to the bench with two minutes. Say LeBron and Kyrie go to the bench with two minutes left in the first quarter, right? But you leave Paul George in there. Paul George will be able to run the offense and score at will whenever he wants. And I think he would be the perfect fit in Cleveland, but it's just a matter of whether the Cavs are willing to give up Kevin Love. And that'll be the question for the next couple of days. I want to see Cleveland win another championship. I want to see LeBron become the greatest of all time. But in order for that to happen, the Cavs are going to need some help. And I think Paul George is a guy that may push them over the top, but only time will tell. So I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below, do you think Paul George will end up in Cleveland? I just shared my thoughts in this video. I didn't have anything scripted or written or anything. I just shared my thoughts. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'll have a bunch of NBA draft content coming out for the rest of this week. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. But that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'm out. Peace.